Welcome to the Fabulous Picture Show. I'm Amanda Palmer. And this week we've got two comedians. Amit Jalili. And David Badil. And we'll be screening their new comedy, The Infidel. So a chilled out Muslim. Now and again, a small sip of the old pale ale passes my lips. Has a confession to make. I'm a uh, old legged like chicken, I'm a not need him. And so does the film screenwriter. So far, more Jews have been offended than Muslims, which is great, uh, because, frankly, I'm more frightened of the Muslims, let's be honest about it. Also on the show, a new documentary that's getting pulses racing. I'm so excited, and I can't hide it. In Lebanon's grimmest prison. <laughs> but first, the tackle cause is an unlikely collision between Islam and Palestine. It was a book, a music scene, and now it's a new film. And we followed them all to the world premiere at the Sundance Film Festival. Park City, Utah, the normally sleepy home of the Sundance Film Festival, was this year invaded by the movement that is Taquacor. Taquacor. The Muslim say they're not really Muslim. The punk say they're not really punk. Muslim punk scene? Taco cool. The movie is by first time director Iyad Zahra. Taco cool. Like a punk rock song just gets to the point, hits it hard. That's what this film does. Also in town, Michael Muhammad Knight, author of the original novel that spawned the real life Muslim punk scene. Every dance, come on up. They've come as well. The Taqwa Corps have truly arrived in Park City. Give it up for Cominas! And they're all sleeping together. We're all staying in the same house. The actors, the musicians, the crew. This morning I had to climb over 30 people to find my wallet. Their punk setup mirrors the low budget film they've come to launch. Assalamu alaikum, Yusuf. Wa alaikum salam, Omi. Today I'm going to check out a house. But the flyer says everyone there is Muslim. Hero Yusuf is a straight-laced Pakistani-American student looking for Muslim roommates. Just keep you focused and out of trouble. So, is everyone here Muslim? From a certain point of view. Taqwa means doing things to please Allah, but Yusuf's new Taqwa core pals makes Quranic study with alcohol, sex, and partying. It's only uh, Muslims who use the term innovation. It means something bad. <laughs> The film's co-written by Knight from his novel. I needed to escape the very narrow definition of Islam that I was given, so I imagined this punk house as a mosque with no imam. So if I were to step into that house, I would be the owner of my religion. Allah is too big, too open. This is my house! For my Islam to be small and closed. It's funny, because on the outside it looks very controversial. But I think once people watch the film and engage themselves in it, they'll find that it's very endearing and kind and sweet. Launching the film at Sundance, the mostly Muslim cast aren't short of attention. I'm joined by the taco course. This but they're having to explain the movie to both Muslims and Americans. They wear a burqa throughout the whole movie. We're talking, just so people know. This Afghani is style burqa, yeah. Noreen DeWolf plays Rabea. Fatima, this is Yusuf. Hi, nice to meet you. A punk feminist who never takes off her burqa. What's it like as an actor to be deprived of your face? I was really scared for my character to become invisible. So I wanted her to be really in your face, like really big and as bold as, as they are. <laughs> The premiere sold out, but Iyad's nervous about the first critical reaction to a project that took him three years. At this point, we just follow Iyad. The guy's under a lot of stress. He's ready to go for tonight. It's a big night for the guy. Excited for him. Excited for all of us. For Iyad, it's also about his whole identity. My American Muslim upbringing, my existence, what my experience was, has been definitely affected in a positive way from making this film. This is something that you're super excited about and dream about this moment. You're also dread. I thought it was very brave of him to do this project. I think for some people it's going to challenge their beliefs or who they are, their ideals. Leave me alone. I don't, I don't want to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm a human being. Doesn't want to be filmed, right? 
As first-time filmmakers, because he had a night need this premiere to deliver good reviews, distribution, and attention. Hey, there's no thoughts, man. Like, there's not a whole lot of like cognitive action going on. Like, I haven't been able to process any of this. But it's a long, long ways from Buffalo, you know. Thank you guys so much, and enjoy the time of course. Ah, yeah, Lord, Islam is. You just felt like you could cross out the word of God? <laughs> it's the first attempt to define what it means to be young Muslim and American. So, Yusuf, are you punk too? With a character who performs a sexual act in a burqa, so it's unlikely the tack records will go unnoticed. Putting on a show, baby. Muslim, so I felt like uh, you misrepresented Rabia's character. Muslim woman is courageous enough to wear a scarf. She wouldn't do anything. You know, she, she, there is a limit. That's the dangerous territory of trying to say that the way that somebody looks determines the way that they act. I also think that her burqa is a punk statement, right? It's like the mohawk. <laughs> Ultimately, we're excited about those kind of questions. Well, these will create a dialogue we've never really had before as a Muslim community, and dialogue that we need to have. You did it. Oh, smart. Well done, well done. Oh, good. Thank you so much. I'm sure the film's going to do all the work now, man. <laughs> so what she wants to do is screen your movie in LA and New York. OK. So give her a call. It's looking good. There's people interested to acquire the film, um, <laughs> domestically and internationally. So things are very positive. All right, so uh, let's see. Uh, so who here saw the movie? We, after we premiered the film, there was only really one way to celebrate, and that was to throw on a massive pump show. If you just go out there and say something that for whatever reason no one else is saying, there are people who need that, and they're gonna come along and, and carry you. I feel like all of us, whether we're writers or musicians or filmmakers, we've been carrying each other, and that's that's what this has been. It's okay. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh. What do you get when you stage the play 12 Angry Men? With the inmates of a notorious Lebanese prison, you get 12 Angry Lebanese and a whole lot more. February 2009 in Lebanon's high security Rumiye prison. <laughs> Government ministers listen as hardened convicts vent their feelings about prison life. <laughs> It's not an appeals board, but a play, 12 Angry Lebanese. Adapted from an acclaimed film starring Henry Fonda about a jury's deliberation. You want to see this boy die because you personally want it, not because of the facts. You're a sadist. The unlikely production and resulting documentary... I walk straight, I am a gentleman. ...were created by gutsy Lebanese director and drama therapist Zena Dakash. You, a woman in the Middle East, decided that you were going to go into one of the most notorious prisons yeah. and, and teach a bunch of men to perform theatre. A bunch of naughty men. <laughs> a bunch of naughty men. <laughs> Definitely it wasn't something easy. It's not only because you're working in a really confined place, but just to get there is the most difficult thing because you have to negotiate and tell people why this would be important. I mean, we're in a third world country in a way, and you have to convince that it's rehabilitative, it's re-educational, it's for the sake of the society and the inmates at the same time. 150 men with assorted criminal background signed up. <laughs> The group soon warmed to Zayna's demanding workshops. <laughs> which forced them to examine themselves and their crimes. After 15 months of training, <laughs> Hey, 
45 men remain. And as the big day approached, expectations mounted. The opening night drew a diverse crowd through the gates of the prison. I mean, these are men who are ostracized from society. Yes. And you bring officials in who have judge them. And they, who would go and congratulate who would them go in the end. And not, not only give them these two hours, but give them centre stage. And why not? It's and why not? Imagine you have a kid and you need to punish this kid if he's done something really bad, you know. But it doesn't mean that you cannot congratulate him too if he does something good. Yeah, one day they'll be out back to the society. How do you want them to be? Do you want them to be full of anger and more criminals than they grew to be, you know? In part two, we're screening The Infidel, and I have a man who has an identity crisis, Omid. You are the man who doesn't know quite who he is. Yes, in the film, I'm the, uh, the Muslim who finds out he's a Jew. This is a Muju film. Muju film. And it's all your fault. It is my fault, and I thought there's only two comedians in the world of comedy who could play a Muslim and a Jew. One is me, and the other is him, and he got the gig. <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's in part two. He met her in the fall. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this special screening of The Infidel. Do I need to introduce them? Omi Jalili and David Badil. Thank you. I'm Thank slightly you. intimidated to stand next to two comedians, so I promise you I won't be funny, and over to you. In March uh, 2006, uh, I did a show at the London Palladium, and David Badil came up to me afterwards and said, I have an idea for a film. I said, what's the film about? He goes, it's about a Muslim who finds out he's a Jew. He sent this script. When I read it, I have to say, word for word, joke for joke, pound for pound, it was the best first draft script I'd ever read in my life. Sadly, that's not the film that you're going to see uh, now. After that was the hangover, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. It, uh, we're going to let you watch the film in a minute, because I think otherwise Omid's going to do a three-hour set, so we've got to have to stop. Uh, but I'm just going to say we were uh, meeting at the distributors yesterday, and I suggested a tagline for the movie, which was funny, feel good, and fatwa free. <laughs> and this is absolutely true. One of the distributors said, what's a fatwa? <laughs> And that is why I think those distributors have taken this movie. <laughs> Muslim Kavi Mahmoud, played by British Iranian comedian Omid Jalili, is your average family guy. Until his son Rashid reveals he's courting the daughter of an ultra militant Muslim fundamentalist. Give me one thing guaranteed to make me less calm than inviting Arshad al Stalin into my family. But his life is really turned upside down by an unexpected revelation. I'm a Jew. Did I tell anyone? I'm the shoe bomber. Pleasure to meet you. Mahmoud befriends Lenny, a Jewish taxi driver, for lessons in how to be a Jew. <laughs> Jalili's comedy has always played with culture clash and stereotype, both in film. These slaves are rotten. It all adds to the flavor. No, 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 wait, wait, wait! can negotiate. And on stage. You know, Omid means hope. It's just a shame that Jalili means less. <laughs> the infidel screenwriter David Badil is also a famous comedian, one of the first in Britain to achieve rock star status. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. Directed by Josh Opinionese, The Infidel isn't unlike the duo's ferocious, sometimes risque comedy. It's a political jab that refuses to be sidelined by prejudice. <laughs> David, what provoked you to want to write this film two years ago, three years ago? I got beaten up 
when I was young, twice in my life, once for being Jewish and once for being a Pakistani. And uh, <laughs> absolutely true. And, and when I was being beaten up by a man who thought I was a Pakistani, I thought about saying, you don't understand, I'm Jewish, as if that would help. And I, <laughs> you know. A lot of Jews are quite dark and could easily be Hindu or Muslim or whatever, and vice versa. And then I think I saw Omid, and I thought, well, he could be a Sephardic Jew. It's a sort of Spanishy, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's you know what I'm talking about. Supposedly, David said that he sort of referenced wanted to create a, a Muslim Homer Simpson. <laughs> Was that your main reference point? Um. Yeah, because I think that's probably how David sees me. Doing it? No, thanks. Do you have any fruit? It says purple stuff inside. Purple is a fruit. As you can see, I put on a lot of weight. <laughs> what we actually did was we just made the cartoon do. flesh, ladies and gentlemen, and here it is. Yeah. Now and again, a small sip of the old pale ale passes my lips, but in here, in here, by the name of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah lives, OK? I think it's a very important thing to show that he's a very normal person. I think that reflects a lot of Muslim Britain right now. Well, actually, uh, that, is, that is an important point, actually, because originally when I first had the idea, as you might expect, it came to me to think, oh, well, perhaps he should be a really, really fundamentalist, devout Muslim, because that's more obviously structurally opposite to him than becoming a Jew. But then I thought, well, let's just make him a nice flawed bloke um, and his Muslimness is kind of not so important but then put him in a situation where it becomes important. Yeah I, I was just gonna tell everyone that I'm um, I'm a uh, bow-legged chicken I'm a knock need hen never been so happy since I don't know when I walk with a wiggle and a squiggle and a squawk <laughs> doing the Tennessee we walk Let's invite Josh to sit down for a moment and we can talk to him. Josh was also involved in script editing. Yes. And he's the director. So let's be nerdy for a moment. Tell us about how you did go about in filming and comedy and some of the things you took into consideration. Now, a lot of the film is shot in these sort of wider takes where you see the actors really do it for real. Um, uh, that saves a lot of m money and time in, in how many shots you have to set up and light and do. But also it gives a, a certain effect that I think I would have always wanted anyway uh, to feel the kind of reality of the comedy taking place between the actors. Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> By working in that way, you put a huge amount of pressure on the actors. <laughs> you know, it's this kind of high wire act because if you're doing a three minute shot and you know that's the whole scene in one go, then, and there are going to be no close ups to cut to and no cutaways and no, no way out, then you know you have to be good as an actor. You have to be spot on. And, and, and with comedy, that's doubly difficult because the, the timing is everything. And... That's it. What I find interesting, Amid is not Muslim, but you are indeed Jewish. And some of the most derisive part of the comedy is the Jewish jokes. Yeah. How do you think it's going to play in the Jewish community? Well, so far, more Jews have been offended than Muslims, which is great, uh, because, frankly, I'm more frightened of the Muslims. Let's be honest about it. I want... <laughs> what do you know about Jews? They've got big noses. They like money. Well, they do. For me, as a Jewish writer, and this might be a flaw in the movie, but it's just the way it is. The direction of the comedy is towards the Jewishness, right? And that's just because I'm easier and more comfortable doing that. Name the five books of Moses. Yeah, I can do this. <clears throat> uh, Genesis. Uh, in Hebrew. In Hebrew. Genesis. One of the classic jokes references uh, Woody Allen film. It's a nice ham this year, Mom. It is. It's dynamite ham. There is a sort of conscious reference to. Annie Hall there, which I'm very glad you picked up on. Uh, he's going out with Diane Keaton, who's a kind of wasp, and so when he goes to dinner with her, he feels like they're looking at him like a Hasidic Jew. Anne tells us that you've been seeing a psychiatrist for 15 years. <coughs> yes, I'm making excellent progress. Pretty soon when I lie down on his couch, I won't have to wear the lobster bib. Whereas in this one, it's a sort of different type of thing because it's internally within his own family, he suddenly thinks, am I suddenly alien? So that's what his subconscious is thinking. Daddy. Yes, darling? Can you do up my shoes? Certainly what I found interesting with this film is that it doesn't deal with just swapping identities of, of you believing that, finding out that you're Jewish, but also it deals with what it is to be a Muslim. I have not been the Muslim I should have been. But who here has? I think, again, the point was to show that he, this, this is a second-generation British Muslim who 
is, I mean, someone like me, I, I, my, my parents moved to Britain in 1958, I was born in 65, and I would say if you look about my, my Britishness or my Iranianness, of course I try and, you know, because it's who you are, you have to be in touch with your roots, but you can't get away from the fact I sound like a British person. Here's the thing about our clerics. Some of them really do teach us about the Holy Quran, and that's fantastic. Some of them are out there protecting our oppressed brothers and sisters. And some of them are beardy, weirdy <laughs> who make it up. Uh, I saw Omid at the, at the Apollo, and he did that line, um, which, exactly as you see it in the movie. And there was a huge round of applause then from a mainly, well, a mainly ethnic audience, not all Muslims, but whatever. And I thought, ah, what there is here is a huge hunger to say, yeah, we're not like that. We're so pleased that there's someone saying we're, you know, not like the nutters. And that's sort of the spirit that infuses this movie entirely. Do you know what Moses called God in the original Hebrew? Allah, 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 because it's the same God. In the history of ethnic comedies, or like My Big Fat Greek Wedding or Bend It Like Beckham or all the way back to Fiddler on the Roof, it tends to be about a young person marrying normally someone from the majority culture because those com comedies are about assimilation. Interestingly, in this movie, there's virtually no one from the big culture. And that's because I think, without meaning to be, it's kind of a genuinely multicultural movie. It's saying this is what Britain is. Now listen, Joe. Don't care about all your stupid arguments. Get off of my stage! Can we please thank them for joining us on the Fabulous Picture Show? Thank you, Amid. Thank you, David, very much. You got something against my family? Is that what it is? Against minicab owners? Right, yeah, I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's Muslims here. Yeah. Muslims. Well, that's it for this fabulous picture show. Now, when Andy Serkis was on the show, he finished it by doing a somersault. Yeah. yeah. If Omid does that, he will take the whole cinema with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. I'm not going to be doing that. No. Make me laugh. Come on. On cue. Um, You're a comedian. Make me oh, laugh. I, 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 I think the sequel will be an Iranian who finds out he's a Nigerian. <laughs> Hi, my name is Reza. But every now and again, I have to look at my examination papers. I'm just going to go. <laughs> that's it. I'll never work with him again. <laughs> You said make me laugh, I did my best. On a scale of 110, how would you rate this film and why? I guess I'd give it a seven. Um, bit of a shame, really, it could have been a nine. Um, but like a lot of British films, it suffers from lack of budget. Yeah, I just couldn't stop laughing. I was laughing from start to finish. I think there's so many stereotypes with Jews and Arabs, and it's nice to sort of bring it down to a more human level. It wasn't just the big gags and the set pieces, it was just the little nuances that I think sort of carried it.